Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.in. Find your dream aviation and aerospace jobs at www.wingsofarrow.in. Now we are going to learn how to find the nozzle throat area of the single stage turbine. Consider in a single stage turbine designed on free vortex theory. The following particulars are given. Mass flow through turbine is 18 kg per second. Inlet total head temperature is 1000 Kelvin. And the inlet total head pressure is 4 kg force per centimeter square. The gas leaves the stage in an axial direction. Assuming that all the nozzle loss amounts to 4% of the isentropic heat drop across the nozzle. Find the total throat area of the nozzle. Assume a mean specific heat at constant pressure of 0.274 throughout the cycle. Given data, mass flow of gas through turbine M is equal to 18 kg per second. Total temperature T suffix T is equal to 1000 Kelvin and total pressure P suffix T is equal to 4 kg force per centimeter square. Mean specific heat at constant pressure C suffix P is equal to 0.274. Now we have to find out the throat area of the nozzle. A turbine having only one set of axial rotor blades or invert radial vanes, then it is called single stage turbine. The smallest cross sectional area of the nozzle is called the throat of the nozzle. The hot exhaust flow is shown at the throat, which means that the Mach number is equal to 1.0 in the throat. So throat area A is equal to M divided by rho into U star where m is the mass flow of the gas which is given and u star is the velocity of gas at throat. We need throat velocity and density of gas to find out the throat area. First find the density of the gas. We know that perfect gas equation rho star is equal to p star divided by r into t star where p star is the critical pressure R is the gas constant which is 29.27 kg force meter per kg Kelvin and T star is the critical temperature. From isentropic relation we can get the temperature and pressure. For an isentropic flow of a perfect gas several relations can be derived to define the pressure, density and temperature along a streamline. Then write T star divided by T suffix T is equal to P star divided by P suffix T to the power gamma minus 1 divided by gamma and which is also equal to 2 divided by gamma plus 1 where gamma is the heat capacitor ratio which is 1.4. Thus P star is equal to 2.168 kg force per centimeter square and T star is equal to 858 Kelvin. Now solving equation number 2, we get the density is 0.863 meter cube per kilogram. Next find the throat velocity. So throat velocity is directly proportional to the specific heat at constant pressure and the isentropic heat drop. Then throat velocity U star is equal to square root of 2 into g into j into c suffix p into t suffix t minus t star where g is the acceleration due to gravity we know which is 9.81 meter per second square and j is the mechanical equivalent of heat which is 427 kilogram force meter per kilocalories and c suffix P is the specific heat at constant pressure which is given. Now substitute the values and solve. We get the throat velocity which is 572 meter per second. Now we can find the throat area. 
solving equation number 1 with the appropriate values we get the required throat area of the nozzle is 364 centimeter square did you know a full moon has different nicknames in different seasons a full moon can have many colorful names but they don't always describe a special celestial phenomenon some are used to refer to a full moon that appears during a certain time of year a harvest moon which is the full moon closest to the autumn equinox is the best known example but there are many others including a wolf moon strawberry moon and the sturgeon moon scientists thought moon dust would cause lunar landers to sink when preparing to send missions to the moon some scientists feared that a thick layer of dust on the body's surface would cause complications one of the strongest proponents of the dust theory was Thomas Gold, an astrophysicist at Cornell University. He insisted that the moon was covered in seas of dust soft and thick enough to swallow a lunar lander. Though the moon's surface is dusty, the layer is too thin to cause problems as the successful landings of the Soviet Lunar 9 and the American survey or spacecrafts proved in 1966. If you have further inquiry or requested video, drop down to our mail wingsofarrow at the rate gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates. For the time being, take care, stay blessed, inspired and fly high.